Requesting safe passage. It isn't easy trusting the winds to guide the sails as your unsteadied hands adjust the mast, uncoil the ropes to enter unfamiliar seas. If you asked me to marry you, I wouldn't necessarily say no. This arrived as we were on an outing, coming home from a picnic. I spoke those words. We part graciously, this man and I, no mention of future meetings. A blush upon my cheeks each time I glance into a silvered mirror. Heat greets my hands as I touch my face. Eyes lower in remembrance of the comfort of his casual presence. Two weeks pass by, then his call, long conversation, May wedding planned, all because words waiting to breathe flew out during a crisp December outing. Grandma Theta and Grandma Ollie, both who loved you enormously while they were with us, they at the wedding, smiling, wishing everybody cheer and joy on this special occasion. I felt the swell of you as a gift upon your May birth, shortly after our anniversary. I felt absolutely satisfied. As it turned out, with all those adults in the house, I could nourish you fully. We never ever used the word spoiled. Nourish the term for our interaction with you. A canopy of love surrounded you. When you first rested in one large hand of your father, you nestled completely at ease. Throughout your early childhood, there were no strangers in your mind, everyone of interest. You burst into this world with joy as your companion, love as your blanket. Now nearly teen, you revel in the theater, long hours, repetition, community, actor, singer, dancer. Finally, at the performance, you speak. It's hard to keep my arms up when I'm flying. Your current role is John and Peter Pan. And then you whisper, but I imagine Grandma in heaven holding a hook on each arm to help me, and I can do it. Arrival, summer program. Russian youngsters, or American youth, mutual ambassadors together to give song to the possibility of peace. Observing white doves fly perfect circles. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Story time and what we know. Childhood knows without timepiece how long it takes to float a twig down shaded ripple stream and how many minnows cold kisses make one's bare toes tickle and why butterflies wear coats of vibrant color for less than a single sumptuous season, and that night velvet holds up the stars. Childhood gleans from long ago which red berries hold the taste of death, which carry pure sun-grown sweetness, and how many fairies can live under a lone toadstool without getting cross, and why frogs and toads live on the opposite sides of the mirror. Ten-year-old spirit, your Gemini birthday. New decade begins, your voyage, boy toward man. You, son of Pisces, water baby, at one with ice blue liquid. You, son of Capricorn, earthling, souls firm on verdant ground, seeing forward, backward, downward, heavenward. Twenty classmates celebrate, strawberry strewn whipped cream covers homemade lemon cake, candles aglow, beacons of good wishes. Later, quiet tears into sobs. Why do you weep, son? For all the times I couldn't cry when I was nine. You cleansing your 10-year-old spirit. Friday morning, you my youngest, uniformed for all saints, teenage years within view, Soon, our paths parallel, you and I intermittent crossings. Today, hurried goodbyes, yet you, with backpack full of this day's adventures, 
stop outside the plate glass window and tenderly blow me a kiss. Lance number 77, or the truck, captain of the Carmel High School football team. Your red truck took you many places when you were 16. And I, the first time that I watched you play a game that I do not understand still, you ended up in the ER. But anyhow, your team, a wonderful team, the group still meets periodically, and I still don't know how to play football. <laughs> Family photo. Hamid, Lance, Melina, Ian, Arletta, me. Feathering. Within the depths lies fertile loam, embraced by slumber dark, awaiting birth until slight light ignites the resting spark. A tiny crack illuminates, a pinpoint opens wide. Shoots of white reach toward pale green, imagine lighter side. In circles old as nature's breath, white and black entwine. Not kindly to each other, light needs dark to shine. The wedding. Although your father wasn't there, I imagined his presence, and I wrote this poem. Above it all, I imagine you looking down upon celebration, dark eyes open, breath easy, <clears throat> as our son weds his beloved. I imagine you holding the rain at bay as you hold the tiller and move the sails to catch the wind during fair weather. We could not help but feel gladness in your presence. I think I caught my thread. You now full grown, family yours, profession that suits your need to create a new each day. Your voice alights into my life to speak the words of mentor, to weave more tightly threads of gratitude for love and grace fully yours. Music, that which you learned from your father that which was enjoyed by all at your wedding. I take out the large white ceramic bowls, put all the ingredients on the kitchen counter to create a traditional challah. Quiet as the dough rises, then the pounding down before shaping into thick strands, braiding as I might my daughter's hair. Then shiny softness, Awaiting another rising before alchemy, performed by oven's constant heat, brings forth bread. The first slice, warmed butter crust, lets me know, as long as I can give life to bread, I can assuage hunger. The motion of the boat becomes a cradle, and the purity of saline mist reminds you of moments approaching birth or death may all be of safe passage. <laughs>